Okay. New, new, new product new, time. New, yep. new, new. We have the new song. Yeah. New, new, new. Okay, okay. so um, I'll do the first one. You do um, the first one. Yeah, you can help me out with that. Because I wear, I have prescription glasses. Yeah. So um, this is a cool accessory. I think it's one of the first and only hardware accessories. I believe it's the first and only hardware, like, interoperable. Yeah. Accessory for Google Glass. So this plugs this is a PCB before it's uh, yeah. installed. So this plugs into Google Glass, and it's very clever the way it works. And I'll, I'll show it. Um, yeah, it's, see it's, how this it's, works big. Out. it's very small. Yeah. It's a little USB thing, a little case. Okay. So uh, okay, Glass. Um, you know, I was trying to get the battery charged right before we um, got on the show, and I hope I, uh, I hope maybe I didn't. No, it's not something. No, I got it. It's all right. I'm in federal land. Okay. okay. Okay, Glass. No. No. Okay, Glass. Toggle flashlight. Oh, yeah. There, there you is. go. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I had to wake it up. And I can do it again. Yeah, okay, Glass. Can... Toggle flashlight. Toggle flashlight. Nope. What's it doing? Oh, I have to speak again. I'm mumbling again. Okay, Glass. Toggle flashlight. Oh, you know what? It's searching for taco flashlight. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Can I, can, I, can I try or does it know your voice only? Oh, wow. There we go. It actually started looking at that. Okay, Glass. Toggle flashlight. Bonk. No, it's off. Okay. Turns out. You have to speak, enunciate, to enunciate. Tur turns out it was actually trying to find ta ta taco flashlight. Taco flashlight. Yeah. Okay, well, if you're uh, not exhausted and you yeah. can uh, say the word, word toggle, yeah. then uh, you can uh, voice control this um, flashlight. We also have a yeah. video showing it. And it works with any Google Glass with yeah. XE16, which is like the latest operating system. Just make sure it's upgraded. It lets yeah. you have permission to. Um, okay, Glass. Toggle flashlight. Back. Okay. Okay. Now you're That's back. much brighter in here. <laughs> I love these lights. It's actually oh. it looks very dim, but actually yeah. it's, it's quite a bright light. It's like a, yeah. a super bright little LED. And I have a quick video. You have a video. Okay, glass. Toggle flashlight. Okay. Okay. You get the point. All right. So that's that's it there. All right. So next up, let's uh, do some packs. We got some packs, Lady Ada. Okay. We have a. Uh, this is a Gemma. Like mini sensor starter pack, which comes with, with um, a Gemma, some of our really nice stainless steel conductive thread, a little piezo for beeping, um, four Flora NeoPixels, um, battery charger, a vibration sensor, a light sensor, and a USB cable for charging, uh, for um, programming, and some alligator clips, which are underneath Phil. It looks like Phil's body is made out of alligator. Clips. I am made out of alligator clips. You made out of alligator clips. Uh, some little pack, a little discount. Uh, we'll be doing some projects with this pack, so yeah. that's why we have this we one. We have another one. We also have uh, our lowest cost uh, wearable starter kit possible. This one comes with um, needles and thread, a battery holder with a little switch in it, and two coin cells so you can power your project. And you can also just buy these coin cells kind of any anywhere if you want to, you know, get more batteries, we sell them in the store as well. A Gemma, and then five white NeoPixels. So this is enough to build many small projects. Uh, I think I, the kit's like $25 or $20, so it's basically the, the lowest cost wearable that we could get going for, for like $20 or $25. You can make your own digital controlled wearable, reprogram it with any computer. Yeah. All it needs is a, a USB cable, which you probably have lying around your house. Okay, and we have some hunks of aluminum. These are four feet by four feet tall. They look enormous, yeah. but they're not. They're, they're, yeah. they're actually uh, fairly small. Yeah, what is this, Adina? That's a slide rail, and you can see there's ball bearings inside of it. Oh. And it's a little platform, and it goes on this railing. We have uh, 600 millimeter long railings, and uh, yeah, these sliders go on top, and then you can attach stuff to the slider. And these are using CNC robots, sliders of all kinds. Um, we actually got these a long time ago, and I kind of never got around to putting them yeah. in the store. But the, the base is uh, aluminum, and then there's this hardened stainless steel rod that's attached. And because a, the rod is attached, it stays very straight, and so you can, it can slide back and forth. It's a little bit too big to show on the overhead, so I'm going to show it here. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is, you want to go to the main? Yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, slider. I'll, I'm not, I'm not going to impale you, don't worry. I can see it so much better with this flashlight. <laughs> 
Um, and this is the slider that goes on, and it basically just slides back and forth. You can have multiple ones if you want. Oh, this is nice. That's nice slide action. Okay, so you can make like a sliding project. Yeah, that's nice. Um, but just be aware, this is not like a, one of those, um, like a lot of people say like, wow, that's a really good deal on what normally is a couple hundred dollars. Um, these are not going to be the same quality as like the high precision, like $500 sliding systems that you get. Um, yeah. Like it's not, you know, it will slide on its own, but it's not like one of those like super slidey ones. So you do need a motor to, or, you know, you can move it by hand, but you can also need um, some sort of motor or something to force the platform back and forth. Another thing about this one is it's, um, it's pretty, you know, slidey and it's low cost, but because it's round, and I'll show this over here, this part moves up and down a little bit. That, that's like a design decision that they made. So it has a little bit of give, and that's good because, you know, if your platform isn't perfectly straight, it will still move because it's, it's round and it's moving on a rounded thing. However, if you want to have something super stable, you'll need two of these. Right, so you'll have one and then you'll have another one. And then the platforms between them is what, it'll have two uh, points of support. So it'll, it'll be able to stay straight. So that's just a design. If you look at most CNC robots, that's what they do. They have two of these rails and then a platform in the middle that holds like the work or the moving head or something. Um, but you can pick these up individually and then, you know, slide around. We will have, next week, this is a preview. Tomorrow we'll have um, a version that is, is, is uh, supported it. so it does not need two it's um t-shaped instead of round um it's not in the store quite yet but if you if you want one of these um just wait till tomorrow or next week we'll also be demoing this in detail but i just wanted to show it because some people are like hey why don't you have supported rails yeah. i'm like we will just like give us a day okay then get to it today do you want me to show you some uh, some of these other i mean this is the rail itself do you want yeah to just show this? some details yeah. and you can see you know it's it's this round metal rod and it's bonded to um a uh, a base yeah. The reason it's 600 millimeters, I really wish we could sell a longer piece, but uh, 24 inches is the U.S. Postal Service limit for how long something can be without like incurring a lot of additional cost. Uh, okay. So that's why we sell stuff in 23.75 inches, which is like 600 yeah. millimeters. 600 millimeters got the, the nice round number for it. Um, you could take two of these and put them in a row, but there would be a little bit of a lump in the middle because it's not going to be perfect. And uh, you can cut this, but you need uh, some tool that can cut hardened stainless steel because hardened stainless steel. Okay. Next, Next up. up, let's do all these fast. We have JST cables in pairs. JST. Uh, three. 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 You three. Want me, you want me to skip to the three? Yeah, just go to, no, these are the three. Just keep going. And okay. then we also have five. 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 Okay. Five. I see what and you're doing there. Six. 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 Okay. Six. So. Of the JST cables. Five, five. Six. We already had four and we had two, so now we have a full range. Okay. These are very basic, low cost, uh, but extremely high quality five, clippy cables. What six. I like about these is they clip together and um, they. Uh, okay. You're breaking out the overhead. Yeah, well, I could show the overhead. Okay, you can do the slider. Whee, slide. Yeah. Hold on, let me get this into. Yeah. This is a slider, by the way. You want to see the slider? But I wanted to show the cables, which are, one second, let me grab them. I'll just demonstrate one set of cables because they're, they're all the same. They are uh, inline cables, which means that, um, yeah. Yeah, am I moving them too much? Well, if you put them on the table, I can focus okay. on them. Okay, hold on. This is pretty much a focus. They clip nicely and they're polarized. You can't plug them in the wrong way, so it's kind of mm -hmm. nice. And then you can just solder whatever you want. These are 22 gauge wires. You look at the data sheet for the connector, which is on the product page. I think they can handle about two amps per contact. Um, so fine for power, fine for data. Um, they're in line and they're nice and strong. Uh, you mm -hmm. see you have, to, you have to click this little latchy guy to open them up. So they stay connected once connected and uh, they can only connect one way. So yeah, nice and strong. These are really great for any kind of inline cable um, design. They're like my favorite kind of inline cable. I have a favorite inline cable. This one, JS JST SM series. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. Nothing wrong with having favorites. I have a favorite. Okay, so next up, um, these we just put in the store like a few moments ago. So I had the race to get them into the uh, the show here. 
So what are these things, Lady Anna? These are JST breakouts. These are breadboard-friendly JST connectors. And yeah. we have... Uh, so you, this is where you'd use them. You'd use them for LiPo. Well, for our LiPo batteries, basically. Okay. This it, is handy. It just makes them breadboard-friendly. Um, it's just a simple little thing that we're like, man, like this would make projects a lot easier. So we have a version that's just the breakout. Yeah. And you get two pins power, two pins ground. And we also have a switched version, which adds a little surface mount switch to oh, okay. it. Okay. And that way you can switch it on and off and also still use it in a breadboard. And, uh, you know, the switch can handle like 300 milliamps per, yeah. um, 340 milliamps per switch, but we parallel them. There's two actual switches. There's two switch contacts in the switch. Yeah. So it's like 600 to so milliamps uh, total that the switch can handle. And uh, it's, it's, you know, rated for four volts, so it's perfect for a live poly battery. Yeah. I like that you're you're kind of making like a construction kit for people almost. Like you could get all the, these breadboard friendly things, and prototype your circuit with a breadboard. Yeah. And then you could use something like a Perma Proto, which mm -hmm. you get for free if you order enough stuff at Adafruit. Yeah. And then you could permanently put it together. Yeah. As a finished circuit, and that's kind of nice. Okay, I can also show it on the overhead if we. If you oh want. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they're like they're super teeny. The f you know, they're I don't know if you want to. Let's come in focus. So this is a little um, non-breadboardable one, and then um, then we have the switched one. And yeah, there's a little slide switch, and you can just slide it with your finger. It's pretty easy. It sticks up enough. Yeah. And then this unplugs and unplugs, so you can plug this into a breadboard or use it with a you know a wire or cabling yeah. harness or whatever. And it, it's handy because it, you know oftentimes you have a, these lipo batteries and they come with the connector and you don't want to splice into them or cut them. This yeah. just makes it so you don't have to. Okay. And you can unplug it from your project. All right. Last up. Star of the show beside you. Long time coming. It's a bag of parts. No. Yay! It's a, yeah, it is a bag of parts, but it makes something pretty amazing. Um, this is the Mini Pop 4 USB RGB kit. Angel, who's one of our team leads here at Adafruit, demonstrating it. You can make Pac-Man in the sky. This is what it looks like assembled. Yeah, some LEDs are on. Yeah. It's actually really, really hard to photograph. Yeah, so, so that's why we only have one photo. Yeah, so Lady, what is this kit? This is a uh, Build It DIY kit. So we've had uh, soldering kits. Our first kit was the Mini Pov 2. This was like product number one, which you don't sell anymore. Um, and then we've upgraded to the Mini Pop 3. Uh, the Mini Pop 2 is parallel, the Mini Pop 3 is serial. Mini Pop 4 is uh, better in, in two ways. One, it has a USB port, so you can program it over USB. And it works under Windows and Mac, for sure, because we, we made sure it worked under Windows and Mac. Linux, it almost certainly will work. I just don't have a Linux machine to test it with. But um, it uses processing, which is an open source framework for, for programming and tools and stuff, and AVR dudes. So it's, it probably will work under uh, Linux. And uh, it also has uh, eight RGB LEDs. And I got these nice uh, Piranha diffused LEDs uh, so that the effect, you get a really nice diffusion effect. And this is good for persistence of vision, or uh, can be also used with light painting. So the light painting is, uh, usually if you have light painting, you can go a little slower. With POV, it actually has to be very fast, because if you're waving it, you want to be able to see it. I can try waving it, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to show up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, it doesn't show up. The, the lighting here is too good. Yeah. It has to be like super dark. But you can look at the photo of Angel. Who um, we, took, we took a snapshot of her while she's swinging it around. So um, this version also runs on AAA batteries. You can adjust the speed with a little potentiometer. It's uh, all open source. You can program it. Uh, actually, it's programmed with Arduino, so you can uh, modify the source code, source code if you want. Yeah. And Philby did a great job with the um, the firmware for this, so you can actually do like 8-bit color from every LED. Yeah. So you can get like pretty cool LED effects. With this, you can you can not just do like red, yellow, green, blue, but like actually a wide range of colors to do you know almost any kind of image that's eight pixels high, and it's a really good price too. I tried to make it as low cost and reasonable so that people could actually pick this up and use it to learn how to solder. Yeah, very cool. And you know, Minipov was kind of a foundational kit for a lot of people um, to get started <laughs> in electronics. Yeah. And we had to do serial ports, parallel ports, parallel ports, parallel ports to start, yeah. and then and, and then it would you program it, and then serial ports. It was a little bit of a hack. 
by bit banging serial, and that, that worked a, kind of okay with USB, but you had to slow it down a lot. And it, it took like a minute or two. Yeah. With USB, it's like near instant, and now it will work with any computer, and, and I'm pretty confident this will work for a very long time. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people want to get experience soldering, and there's a lot of surface mount stuff that's already done and finished for you, but we always like to have cool kits that are through holes so people learn how to solder. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. this is a, a nice upgrade. Well, We'll probably have to eventually discontinue the Mini Pop 3 because just people don't have serial ports on their computers yeah, it's anymore. Hard. It's hard to get those. And, you know, if you have to buy an adapter, it gets really expensive. It's, yeah. it's actually just the Mini Pop 4 is much better. You can do, like, any color, and, and we have, like, graphical software for uploading images and stuff. So I yeah. think I think this is, this is the future. Okay. So with all that being said, that was New Products Lady. Good work. Yay. Good stuff.